Hey, it's the Open Mic Diaries again. I'm Scott Curtis. I'm a 59-year-old comedian who has been doing stand-up comedy since he was 52. Then I quit for a while and came back, and I'm desperately trying to get funny before I die. So I'm being super serious. I'm recording every set, and I'm going to throw every set up here uncut, unedited, and the good, bad, and the absolutely terrible is going to come out. I'm doing a little bit of commentary in between jokes here. I'll do a little bit of commentary of what I thought of the mic. Just whatever's going through my mind. That's what, what I'm going to do. If you like it, subscribe. You know, leave a comment. Find me on social media. There's links in the description that can take you wherever you want to go. But, man, I'm, I'm really having fun at this, even though, oh, boy, is this one depressing as hell. Because this one is the holy hell of open mics. It started out okay. It was like a medium audience. And then by the time I got up, most of the comics were out smoking and the audience was not having it. They did not like me at all. So, so let's roll, shall we? Let's roll this baby. Thank you, thank you. I don't know if anybody's told you or not. It's Black Mystery Month. <laughs> it's my favorite month because I get to tell all the white people I know that I have more than one black friend. It's fantastic. In honor of Black History Month, uh, I will not be saying the N word in my set tonight. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so I'm going to get in my set now. Um, um, what's up with black people? <laughs> it's like uh, they've got their own culture and stuff. Uh, wow, that joke has absolutely done very well. I don't want to say killed. It's done well every other time I've done it. That night, it just shit the bed, and I just knew the rest of the set was going to just be awful because of it. But I kept doing it. Here we go. Um, my uh, son just had a baby. My son and his wife just had a baby. Yeah, yeah thank you. He uh, called me up for some parenting advice, and um, I said, son, you remember the stuff I did when you were a kid? He said, yeah. I said, don't do that. He said, thanks. I said, fuck off, loser. <laughs> because I wasn't a good parent. My daughter has a couple kids. Um, she called me asking for uh, parenting advice. Yeah, that's a lie. She remembers her childhood. I was fucking nothing. <clears throat> absolutely, just absolutely fucking nothing from that. And it's it may not be the greatest joke in the world, but it's it, it's fine. And I I really kind of gave up after that. I just said the jokes, and I I don't know, man. I mean, you've, you're, you're going to see some of these jokes way more than once. And I think this one's on maybe two other videos that are already up. But, wow. I mean, it's just like a vacuum sucking all the energy from the earth there. Jesus. Uh, depressed. Any, anybody depressed out there? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Of course, I'm going to bring up my depressed joke. I don't know if I, I even planned that, but yeah, I was depressed right there, right about as depressed as I could be, right then and there, baby. I told my doctor I was depressed. She said, exercise. I said, I do. She said, exercise more. And I said, doc, I would have to exercise 24-7, 365 in order not to feel depressed. She says, that's untenable. I said, no cap. She said, how about some pills? I said, max dosage, please. She said, bad. Still depressed. Um, I, one of the Jesus. I, I don't know what more to say here. Really, it's, it's worse than a funeral. The thing that I like to do um, to help with my depression is reach out to folks who I know are uh, sharing depression with me. And uh, I reached out to a friend and uh, said, uh, hey, how are you doing? On a scale of 1 to 10, 
Oh yeah, and uh, they messaged back and said, man, I've been doing pretty good uh, for quite a while now. I'm uh, like a one or a two. And I said, man, that's fantastic. I'm so happy for you. And uh, then I blocked them. Because I don't need that kind of positivity in my life. Do I? Yep, don't need that kind of positivity in my life. And I don't need this mic either. I mean, if this was my first mic, I probably would just quit. I've got another friend that sent me these motivational quotes. Uh, she sent me uh, she sent me one this morning that says, never put the key to your happiness in someone else's pocket. What key? <laughs> I've never seen this key. Where's the key at? If I had it, I certainly wouldn't put it in somebody else's pocket. I would use it. Because I'm depressed. This is the best set I've ever had in my life. Yeah. I I don't know. I, maybe I should have taken my shirt off. I, it, wow. I'm really glad I'm doing this. Any pie heads out there tonight? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Good. Good. Um, so the, the pot of today is so much better than the It's, uh, you got something called quality control, and uh, it's, it's just much better, just much better. I really only had two types of pot I could get when I was a kid, uh, mostly seeds and mostly stems. And um, I'm just hoping the R&D department decides to uh, start working on edibles, because uh, we need edibles to be predictable, don't we? I mean, I take an album before I go to a party just to work on the social anxiety, and two hours after I get there, I'm asleep on the dog bed. And uh, I take an edible because I want to sleep. And uh, at two in the morning, I'm arranging everything in my refrigerator by the way it sounds when I chew it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Yep, that's my edibles joke. I, I think that was Matthew, a friend of mine that was laughing at the end. I no, Nobody else was. Jesus. I do want to uh, let you know that uh, uh, on Saturday night at Shenanigans Comedy Theater, I will uh, be bringing out something I haven't done for three years. It's called Eye Sockets of Doom. Um, and at uh, 10 p.m., uh, I'll give you just a little taste of it here. I don't even know why I tried to do this. <laughs> I'm putting these and many other things in my eye sockets, <laughs> which I like to call the eighth wonder of the world. That's uh, 10 p.m. at Shenanigans Comedy Theater. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just <clears throat> the worst thing in the world. I, I've got an Eye Sockets of Doom video that I'll put up, but uh, wow. I, I hated every minute of it. And you're going to have sets like this. You're going to have open mics like this. You're going you're gonna to have a set where it just isn't working. And one of the things I'm working on, so this is the Open Mic Diaries, one of the things I'm working on is reading the audience better so that I can change things up based on what kind of audience I have. Now here, I don't know what the hell I could have done. Like I said, you know, take my shirt off. Uh, what What is going to wake these people up? Because... What I did certainly didn't. Jeez. I, it, you watch that and you just wonder why you even do stand up. But, you know, I said the stuff out loud. I lasted through it. And there you go. This is uh, episode three, I guess. I, I'm not really counting episodes, but this is the third thing I've uploaded for the Open Mic Diaries. And wow. Sucks. Like I said, bookmark this one and watch it after you have a bad mic because it can't get any worse than that. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to. Leave me a comment. Check out my socials in the description.
I'm Scott Curtis. This is the Open Mic Diaries, and I don't think I could do any more of this today. I'm done. <laughs> See ya.